And I was trying to find help in order to negotiate that term sheet and it was just impossible to find. Like my lawyer who was a real estate lawyer would tell me, no, this, these terms, they don't work because they had no knowledge of in tech. And then actually I have a funny story with my, I actually asked my dad who's an economist to come help me with the negotiation. So my dad's like, yeah, of course, no problem. I'm going to read your term sheet and come with you. So we get to the meeting with Barry Tech and he's like, okay, I want to start first. I think just don't waste your time with these term sheets and these kind of things. Just send an email to the CEO of GE and tell them, hey, we have this nice product. We won this competition. Why don't you buy the technology? And it was the first time that it actually hit me that if I was going to do this, I was going to be on my own. <laughs> and so I just Googled every term in the term sheet. I signed a very unfavorable term sheet, but this is a term sheet that got me out of my job and gave me some, some sense of security that I was going to do this full time. What was your expectation? So the first business plan was we spend six months on prototyping and then we will find someone to license technology. Mm. Um, so from that day, six months later, I still hadn't found an engineer in Lebanon who was able to do what I wanted to do. Actually, I had found a bunch of engineers, but either some, it was just such a bad cultural experience. I, after six months of struggling, I understood that I was not going to find the expertise I needed in Lebanon. And that's when I started to look outside. So very quickly, that business plan of six months in licensing, uh, turned into we need much more time for the prototyping and we need much more cash for the prototyping and the licensing was put on the side until we find a good team that's able to really get the prototype to the next conversation so <clears throat> from there you went on to actually build uh, build the product yeah i mean the idea was that if it were licensing or if it were commercializing the product we had to refine our prototype to understand what our IP is and to actually build our IP and demo something to these companies. So we felt that the initial direction would have been the same. Like we need a technical team, we need to file some patents around the technology and we need to better define our technology to present it to these companies. And so um, once you had you know, the prototype sort of built, um, did you do much customer consumer testing? So it's, it's very hard to do customer testing with swimming because it kind of requires the prototype to be waterproof and most of the prototyping tools do not allow for waterproofing. So we were having conversations with swimmers and we were kind of testing on dry land the form factor and sometimes the, the form factor would make it to the pool but at that stage we still haven't had a swimmer swim with a fully functional product and get the full experience mm -hmm. just because it was impossible to do so with just a prototype. Right. So how did you then decide that okay this is what we're going to go with when you hadn't when you, yeah. when you didn't know that consumers actually wanted the full functionality? So I was, I was at a point where we kind of had a prototype form and basic function. We hadn't tested it in the water, but we had tested it on dry land. And I, was, I had very positive conversations with a lot of swimmers, but it still wasn't confirmed that it was a real need. And I was at a point also where the initial money I had raised from Veritech was almost over, and I was struggling a little bit to find funding. And so I decided to launch a crowdfunding campaign in order to prove market demand. Mm -hmm. And so I was out of money when I launched the crowdfunding campaign. So I hired an intern who was my sister's friend and both of us together emailed every single person in the world that has anything to do with swimming or tech or press. And that's how we generated all of our orders. Like we got orders from a few thousand people in 56 countries. Um, and basically when that campaign, we got so much coverage around the campaign that we got contacted by multiple swim brands afterwards and we got contacted by multiple investors who wanted to do um, a follow-on round. And so you raised money against that? So we raised money, we raised 800k then and the idea was that now we had consumers who had committed cash so now we had to build the product. Right. The licensing model was kind of out of the gate. Yeah. Uh, we started engaging with swimming brands to have a conversation, but we started to build the product 
uh, with the perspective of manufacturing it and shipping it. 